Okay. Who's faster? Dave, check it. Looks like you're live. You're live? Okay. We Hang want on. To be dead. Hey there, everyone. Just a second while we make sure we're actually live. Let me mute this. Probably don't. Uh, it's live? turning on. We're live, we're live. live now. Yes, you are live. We are live. That is so good to know. Are we ready to start? Go for it. Go for it. Hi, everybody. And Jeanette says hi. And my brain is so dead, I can't remember who we are. <laughs> I'm Jill from livingonadime.com and co author of the cookbook Dining on a Dime. And Tara is taking a slight vacation, so Handsome Dave and I are taking over for this week. Mike's behind the camera helping ah, us so today we're going to talk about a little variety of different things organizing i know you're probably all sitting there surrounded in mounds of leftovers so i might touch on leftovers a little bit too to start out with <laughs> and is anybody on yet do yeah, we have karen says hi wanda merry christmas family merry oh, Beth. hi jill hi everybody Live, Moxie, BB. I know I say this all the time, but I hate it because I can't read your comments and see what all you're saying. But hi to everybody. Hello from Winnipeg, Manitoba. Hi. So wow. This hi. show and topic. Yay. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Hi, Merry Mama Jill. Yeah. We better get we started. I need to talk. Michael said I shouldn't talk very fast. Tara said I needed to hurry up and talk fast, so I'm just totally confused. Well, you have 10 hours worth of stuff. <laughs> I have 10 hours worth of stuff so to tell. Maybe. Before we get officially started, I'm always talking about my mom's, um, how she's such a good designer. And she was hollering at me because I brought these two. I was going to show you a couple of her clothes. I was digging through her closet. And she said, why are you taking those? Because these items of clothing are worn. But I wanted to show you how she designed a couple of tops that she made. She was always thinking, I talk about this so much, I thought I would just show them to you, how she takes something and she just rethinks it and redesigns it. Here's one top. This is just a sweatshirt and she didn't copy anything off of Pinterest. She mm. just made this up herself. She just knit this top <clears throat> part, took the sweatshirt and made idea. this design. Yeah, it was her idea. Wow. And then she added these cuffs onto this sweatshirt and put it in. This is the type of thing she would do constantly. Wait. Dude, that is good. Is that soft? That is good. Fluffy? Yeah. They're really worn because she's had them for a while. But then she would take, like this one has the, she at, she doesn't like to have a bare neck, so she just added this little ruffle here. And, of course, the appliques. But she was always, I've never hardly seen her wear a top that was just off the rack. She always would take everything and design it. And I, or design something different for it. And so I talk about that quite often. I just show you a couple of examples um, of what she was doing. Now, okay, I want you to brace yourself. David, my son, gave us a Christmas present that my chocolate friends are going to flip over. I, I can't even hardly speak about it. It's so much. It's just, well, I just don't, I don't have words for it, so I'm just going to show you. Are you ready? Look what he sent us for Christmas. That's. Can you 7, believe that, guys? Calories, I think, right? It's only 7,000 calories, so I could spread that out over two days. What? Tara said I was using the word us, but he did say Nan, too. No, it says The packaging <laughs> said and Nan. I'm cabbaging on to it. Can you okay, believe this is that, guys? 6,750. <laughs> yeah, and since mom is off sugar, BJ's off sugar, dad's. On a diet. I'm about to go. You don't sugar. like chocolate, so Nan um, gets the whole thing. Jill, I'm happy. Uh, your chocolate, your chocolate fan club here is just going crazy. <laughs> oh Are you goodness. envious of me or what, guys? Wow. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yeah. And my hands. I must have some too. You must have some too. Jack and I are the only ones to get to eat that thing, huh? See, now I'll help you eat it, yummy. <laughs> <laughs> I about flipped out when Michael unwrapped that crazy thing. All right, I'm well, going to get started. What? Before you get started, mm -hmm. a few people, I think, aren't aware, and they're like, I hope Tara's okay. Oh, she's just taking about a break until February, just taking a little vacation. She's going to be Miss Molly Homemaker for a few weeks. She's behind the scenes sitting over there reading, but she, we're making her relax and take it easy and everything. So that. She said, whatever. When I said we're letting her relax, she said, whatever. So, But she's going to take off for a little bit just to get a little bit of rest 
for about, what, six weeks? Is that what you guys said? Four to six weeks, something like that. So I'm taking over now. Mike and the boys will be taking over next week. All the shows for, well, it'll only be for about four or five weeks, maybe. Mm -hmm. And if you guys have any questions, um, pop in. Betty what? says she just had a sugar spike seeing you all that time. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> Is that not the truth? Um, if you have any questions that's off the topic for tonight, go ahead and pop in with them because I'd rather answer your questions because we can always talk about this topic, you know, later on. But I'm not always on here to answer your questions, so that's why I wanted you to answer them. Tonight, we're going to talk about leftovers organizing, like I said. Hey, so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh, did you have one? That's fine. No, 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 no. Oh. Jenna just said, hand over that chocolate and no one gets hurt. <laughs> <laughs> That's cute. So uh, before we start the organizing, I'm just going to run through a really quick list of things to do with those leftovers from yesterday's dinner that you have. Before you do that, uh, someone wanted to see this. Dad, Can you read it to him? Read it to him, Dave. Well, just it says, I shoot people and sometimes cut off their heads. It's got a camera it's, on it. It's got a camera. It says, I shoot people. Dad, sometimes I cut off their heads. <laughs> yeah. So that's it his is... new Christmas mug, huh? Oh, it's, it's yeah, it's kind of shined out, but, you know, it's fine. There was a little bright spot on it. But, yeah. <laughs> but you can see, yeah. It's... It was good that you said that, though. That it, it was it was, it was a great, great gift. You had a good Christmas, didn't you, Dave? Yeah, pretty good. You good did. Oh, we should bring oh, in that heat solar mention. system. What? We should mention for the people uh, that don't know that they definitely want to check in Monday because since we we hit a hundred thousand subscribers on YouTube, yeah. So Monday we're gonna do a drawing for mm -hmm. free cookbooks. Monday a drawing for free cookbooks because we hit a hundred thousand. And feet. an apron. And an apron. We're gonna do a drawing for an apron too. How many? Of Tara, them? who's not part of this operation okay. right now, is chiming in and saying an apron. <laughs> <laughs> But so I'm going to just run through leftovers. I'm not going to give you necessarily recipes because you go to livingonadime.com or if you've got our cookbook, Dining on a Dime, there's a whole uh, index in here on what to do with leftovers and recipes that go with them in the book. So we've got tons of leftover recipes and Michael put up links for those on the website so you can check those out and so I won't go through the recipes I'll just give you ideas of what to do and then you can look them up yourself uh, later on after the show will that work yes I, I will be sharing some of the links but there are a lot of them so if you want to see all of them you can go to livingonadime.com and click the show notes button and they're all there show notes button and you'll find all the links that you need for those yep. the leftovers but You'll, I'll start out with turkey. If you had turkey, of course, we've gone through this before, but you can pull the meat off and then freeze it in packets for sandwiches later on, turkey casseroles, turkey pot pie, use the gravy and the turkey. Take some of the carrots and celery from the relish dish, and you can add that in for a vegetable in the, the turkey pot pie. And even when you're making pie crust for the holidays, uh, take some of the leftover scrap pieces and just freeze them. Then afterwards, you can lay those scrap pieces on top of the turkey and gravy to make the, the turkey pot Sorry. pie. I just have something for mom. And, I she's and gonna so you can do sure. that. Use those leftover scraps of dough on top of that for the turkey pot pie. Of course, save the bones. And I just wrap the foil and everything that I cooked the turkey in. Put it in a huge plastic bag and throw it in the freezer in January. Pull the bones out and cook them for soup and we've got the good turkey soup recipe on there it's so simple it takes no spices basically hardly at all and nothing you don't have to do a whole lot of anything for those uh you can also take uh like the relish dish take all the vegetables off of that and serve it up in a tossed salad you can cut it up for tossed salads put it in vegetable soup the different things uh, you can take the cauliflower and the broccoli if you had that on a relish dish and put a cheese sauce on it and serve it as a side dish for a vegetable we have exactly a hundred thousand did did you need me michael oh no i didn't oh. mean to interrupt that sense just Sorry. when you get to oh. the sauce and so um you can do that with the relish dish let's see if you had ham for christmas take uh the ham and cut it dice it up or Cut it up into small cubes and keep them frozen for packets. It's so good for scrambled eggs. You can pull a packet out for a chef's salad. 
uh, sprinkle a chef salad. You could take, uh, put the little diced ham into like green beans when you make them, or uh, if you mm. make baked beans, put them into baked beans. You could also, when you fry up hash browns or country fries, just fry a little bit of those ham, diced ham in with the um, hash browns. I know I'm going fast, but I've got several I want to get in in a couple of minutes. Yes, Michael? Oh, I can pause. Just whenever you're ready. I, I can pause. I do have some, some questions with this. Uh, so Trinity was wondering how long will leftover cook, uh, turkey, however, how long will leftover cooked turkey pieces stay good in the freezer? Oh, uh, I would say four to six months. I keep them for, the thing is that I don't keep them that long because I use them up so much. So, but they stay quite a while in the freezer. Your mom says, my leftovers are gone. <laughs> That's a way to do it, is to get the leftovers gone if you can. I wish is there another one, Michael? Um, sorry. Uh, La Diana is asking, what can I use clear glass kitchen canisters for besides flour, sugar, tea? Oh, in the ki if you're meaning in the kitchen, um, yes. let's say we... Is that clear, what She says clear glass. Yes. Clear glass. Well, I use clear glass down in my sewing room, my craft room, to put my... Uh, different craft stuff in too downstairs but you could also put rice in there uh, if you eat a lot of macaroni use a lot of macaroni that type of thing you could put uh, macaroni those types of things in there use it for a cookie jar if it's a larger jar uh, ca candy <laughs> of course candy you could put in them uh, let's see what else but anything that you would keep in a pantry almost you could uh, go ahead and store in those glass containers um, and when I say candy, you could throw candy bars in there and different things like that. You don't have to take them out of the wrappers, nothing like that. And even like if you don't have a lot of cabinet space, but you have more counter space, you could store packets of uh, Jello, those small, you know, just they're colorful. And you think, well, I don't want that out, but it, with the color and all the bright color and everything, it's kind of cute to store anything just about like that packets of hot chocolate i make up the hot chocolate mix that we've got in dining on a dime i think do we have it on the website too i'm not sure but you could type in hot chocolate mix on the website living on a dime we have like a, i think one post has seven kinds of hot chocolate yeah we've got several ty kinds of hot chocolate and so you can make up a big batch of that it makes up a huge batch batch and you can keep that in a glass canister yeah, I hope that gives you some ideas a little bit. So, But anyway, on the leftovers, back to the ham, you can grind up the turkey and make ham salad. Uh, just add in a couple of hard-boiled eggs and dill pickle. Yeah, Michael? Well, Cindy just says cupcake holders fit nicely in glass jars. Yes, cupcake holders. Uh, I have a little basket that I keep birthday candles, cupcake holders, and that type of thing. You could put all those types of things into a glass canister like that. Um but you could have ham salad, grind it up for ham salad in a meat grinder. And, um, you know, if you say, well, I'm gluten-free, I can't have ham sandwiches, stuff with a ham, make, with a ham spread, you can just put it on a lettuce leaf. And if I'm not, boy, what are you doing to now? Oh, he's got a new present for Christmas, <laughs> didn't you? Did you show him your, his bow tie that he got on there? That he has. Um, so, uh, what I... Oh, yes, Michael. Oh, no, you didn't have to say anything. I was just saying. Well, Margaret just says jars are great for cornstarch, cornmeal, etc. Yeah, depending on the size, you know, you can do things like cornstarch. Uh, I keep my baking soda in a smaller jar and, and container like that. So um, let's see. What else did you have for if you have leftover mashed potatoes, you can put like a half a cup in your bread recipe or in your dinner roll recipe mm. if you make it from scratch and for some reason the potatoes make the dough it, they're lighter and fluffier you could also use ma uh, mashed potatoes to thicken up soups um, if you have leftover jello instead of just serv serving the jello again you can chop it kind of in chunks or cubes and mix it with leftover whipped cream and serve it like that so and oh if you have like leftover cake cupcakes Wrap them up individually, and for the next few weeks, you'll have something to grab for the kids' lunch or your lunch or some, you know, and that type of thing. Did you? <clears throat> One is asking, do things last as long in plastic containers as glass containers when you store them? You know, I think they probably maybe last as long, but while I like glass containers better just because the plastic tends to 
uh, pick up the flavors of the other items in the freezer a little bit more. I don't know. They have, you can take it. It gives it, I don't want to say an off taste, but it has a different taste. The glass containers don't allow any other flavors to leak in usually. So I prefer glass containers, although I do use plastic too, of course. But um, Some people, are, a lot of people are asking about the drawing we mentioned. Oh, uh -huh. for the cookbook. The drawing for the cookbook, yeah. We'll announce on Monday how to enter. Oh, yes. We'll tell you all the details on Monday about entering what you have to do and that type of thing for the drawing on Monday. Yeah. That it? Yep. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but just, oh, like with, um, you could take, if you have leftover potato chips that are just crumbs, and we had a lot of crumbly crackers, don't throw those out. Take those and and cr uh, crush them up and put them on uh, casseroles on top of a turkey casserole. Just sprinkle them on top, that type of thing. You could add a tablespoon of butter to them. Um, that's another thing you can store in jars, if you've got smaller jars, is cracker crumbs and keep some cracker crumbs. And you can keep them in the freezer too, which works. Mm -hmm. uh, Karen's asking, if you don't have a meat grinder, how can you grind up ham? Blender. Meat. You know... <laughs> Kidding, you know. really, you almost need, a, I have just old-fashioned hand meat grinder is what I use. And you really, it won't be quite the same. You could gr use a grater. It'll be a little bit chunkier, oh, but it still would work. If you just have a hand grater, you can use that. Grate up a little pickle in that. Yes, Michael? Hmm. And Jeanette says, Jill, I want to cook my turkey, but it's frozen. No room in the fridge to thaw. Can it be cooked frozen according to the recipe? I don't think so, but yeah. But you can set it outside. I was going to say you can set it in a garage, um, or like a cooler outside, something like that. If you can't, it's better not to cook a turkey frozen. If, so here's another one that you mm. might be able to answer, Jill. I have a huge bowl of leftover yeast roll dough. How should I freeze? Maybe <clears throat> bake the rolls and then freeze them. Uh, you could do either way. You can just make them into your rolls and put them in the pan and then when you get ready to uh, use them you need to let this set out on the counter and thaw I think it's it's probably about an hour or so and let them rise and thaw you could also roll it out into cinnamon roll um, make cinnamon rolls out of it like that and roll them up and then just put them in the pan Cover them, freeze them, and then when you're ready for cinnamon rolls, you can just pull them out, let them thaw out for about an hour, and then put them in the oven and bake them like that. It depends on some of the recipes, how thick you make them, that type of thing, on the thawing. Just till they, let them thaw until they rise, kind of in du double. Michael's back there just laughing. That's why I'm pausing, guys. Did you have another one, Michael? Oh, just... Uh, somebody was asking if tofurkey can be frozen. I'm like, I have no idea. To turkey? <laughs> Tofu a, I turkey? Think I think that's to yes. Is. <laughs> I have no idea on that. I've never, ever done that before, so I don't know. Never even heard of it. So. It's fake turkey. Oh, is that like vegan turkey or something? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, okay. it's fake turkey. <laughs> so, all right. So I think I'll go ahead and leave off with the leftovers if we don't have any more questions and go on to organizing. Unless you have... No, yeah. that's fine. There is one organizing question if you want okay. before we mm -hmm. go. I mean, before uh, before you start on it. Uh, Nong was asking, what's the best way to store and organize your blankets and such without closets? What I do with mine is I take, at the end of the season, when I'm not going to use them, I fold them in half and I slide them underneath my the end of my mattress and I can get a two or three under there with them just folded in half. Uh, you could even fold them up. And um, another thing I do, I've done in the past is I have, I will fold them up and put them in. I have pillow shams, and I'll put them inside the pillow shams instead of a pillow, and just uh, you know put them on the bed or on a couch, something like that. Especially if they're lighter weight ones, you can store it like that. You can store them under the bed, of course. You can get really nice uh, blanket boxes that slide underneath the bed. You can put them under there. Um, look for, uh, like you, I do have mine in Chester drawers now. I don't have very much closet space either, so I have mine in two larger Chester drawers. I put them there. If you have a small 
uh, foot locker, not foot locker, um, what do I want to call it? Chest at the end of your bed that opens up and you can put things in there. Cool. So, you know, you or even they have footstools now that you have that are hollow and empty inside. Try to use that type of furniture and you can store blankets in there. And so does that cover it, I hope? Give you some ideas to get you started with. I think what I'm going to do for the organizing, I have to, I only have... 40 minutes left, and I'm trying to put squeeze in an eight-hour well, class in 40 minutes. You're not super tight on time unless you have to get to grab. <coughs> oh, okay. So, um, so I, I won't be able to go in a lot of detail, but in case some of you are just coming on, and I know I keep repeating this, go to livingonadime.com and check out our website. We have got a ton of organizing articles where I go into very a whole lot of detail extreme detail on organizing we do everything from organizing to cleaning to just all kinds of things Tara and I do Cindy also called it a hope chest hope chest yes it's a hope chest um, also uh, go to our YouTube channel living on a dime our YouTube channel where Tara and I both do separate and together organizing uh, I actually have a playlist of whole bunches of our um, organizing videos and I will share that in the description okay but it's also on the show notes page yeah yes Michael has them gathered up and he's putting them on the show notes that he's going to share with you too now we'll start off with learning how to and, fold a fitted sheet oh. and the show notes you can go to livingonadime.com and click show notes <laughs> or if you're on YouTube you can just yeah. look in the description below <laughs> So my, them why that's significant. I don't know. Why is folding, just storage. folding a fitted sheet yeah. important? 20 million views. Well, that too. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's funny. No, no, no. My grandchildren no. know me for the rest of my I'm life as the lady that folded a fitted sheet. Mm -hmm. with, so but all my friends want to use that too. <laughs> so he'll link those up. And so even though I can't go into extreme detail, I'm going to hit the highlights. And then you can check those things out. We even in living are in dining on a dime cookbook in our cookbook here. We have a whole section. I'm not at the back, and it talks. We talk about laundry and linens. We have cleaning ideas, clean how to make cleaning products, how to clean your bathroom, how to clean your kitchen. So we even have some of those tips in um, dining on a dime cookbook. I'm mostly going to try to get you guys excited about organizing, which I know you, a lot of you are chuckling over that and thinking, oh, yeah, right, I really want to get excited over cleaning. Well, you should have seen me. I was really oh, excited and going yes, at I'm it. Yes, I'm going to tell oh. them about you doing that, getting all motivated. But um, before <laughs> you do any organizing, you can't do it unless you really want to do it. It's like any 12-step program that you have to admit there's a problem and then you have to really want to do something about it. We're going to be starting doing New Year's resolutions. I don't ever do a New Year's resolution. I think if you know there's something wrong in your life that needs to be changed, you shouldn't wait till New Year's to do it. You need to start right now and try to fix it. And I'm getting a little more serious because I don't think we realize how important this is in our lives. Uh, I, I deal with families a lot at different times, and I see such chaos, just the chaos from the mess, and uh, their home's not being clean. And I see how it's affecting the kids and the mom and the dad, their stress. People can't find anything. They get irritated. Well, why did you move this? Where did you put that? This should be here. It's not here. Did you move this? People can't find anything. My clothes aren't clean. Where's my shirt? I have no clean socks. I mean, if you just wipe out and keep your homes organized and clean, do you know, listen to yourselves, how much would you wipe out of hollering and the stress in your house just with that alone? Jack, I mean, it really makes a difference. So, where did you put my underwear? I, <laughs> Jack, where did you put my I'm getting, I'm getting comments here from the peanut gallery, so it's very hard for me to keep going here. But, I mean, it really is important. So that's why I'm going to spend more time with trying to get you motivated. We have a, um, I guess you'd call it a short story. It's on the website, Living on a Dime. Once again, check the show notes. It's called When Queens Ride By. And this was one of the main things that I've always liked 
you know, people have life verses, and I have those too. But this book, <laughs> Tar is just laughing at me back there. But when Queen's by, Rights by is one of, of all the things I've read in all the years, this has been one of the biggest things that's been the most important to me for my homemaking skills and to re to remember what I'm wow. what I what it means for me to be a homemaker. And I'm sharing that link right now. Mike's sharing the link now. And it's also you. in the description on YouTube and in the show notes. Okay, it's on it's it's in the description on our YouTube channel. Uh, it's in the description on the YouTube channel and also if they uh, if they missed it in the comments, they can go to livingonadime.com and click show notes, and it's in the show notes. It's show notes. It's not very long. And it's when I, queens ride by. When, when queens ride by. And I just got an email not too long ago. We get, we've gotten so many over the years, but this one I just recently got. And she said, I went and read it. My house was a mess, and I went and read it. And she said, I looked at that thing and thought, there is no way this is going to work, and there's no way that will make a difference. And she said, I just shrugged it off and thought, you know, it's not it's that it thought she almost laughed, kind of laughed at it. And she said, after a month or two, things were so bad. And um, she said, I thought, well, I'll just give it a try. It's dumb. It's crazy, but I'm just going to give it a try. She said, you have changed my life with that story. She said, I can never go back again. My family now is so happy. I got rid of the chaos, the stress is gone, and we actually enjoy being home. And that story alone, what I put in practice after reading that story a second time, she said it just it just made all the difference in the world. Some might look at it and say there's no way you can do that nowadays. It's a dated story or something. It makes a difference. If you try it, actually put it into practice. She said she's been doing it for months now, and she'd never change. Yes, sir. Uh, Don Metz 11 wants to know, how do you handle a husband that gets mad when things are organized? When they're organized? Yeah. Kick him out. Kick him out. <laughs> Michael says, kick him out. No, Michael. <laughs> some, some questions like that, there's something, what do I want to say? You need to, as a couple there are things that you need to discuss together. Compromise, work together on it. It's more of a, that's more of a couple's issue than an actual getting organized issue. And you have to maybe compromise with him like, okay, you can have this room and you can just have it in total chaos if you want. I can't believe he doesn't want it organized. Well, yeah, no, but I don't understand. Well, yeah, and so you need to compromise that. There are some gals, I knew a woman once that, make sure you're not going overboard. There's a happy medium. When I say organized, I'm not talking about having a home that's a magazine perfect. I'm talking about a home where it's easy to find things, where um, uh, you can still live in comfortably. If once in a while something gets dropped on the floor, it's no big deal. It's It's healthy it's a healthy home but it's not an over sanitized home a woman i once know her husband got up off the couch and he was walking across the floor and a piece of lint from when he fell off of his pants while he was walking she started screaming bloody murder at him look what you did you dropped that lint on the floor that's the other extreme you have to have balance when we get out of balance on either end is when it makes for an unhappy family and you know spouses and, and kids and that type of thing. So you need to keep balance there and not go to the other extreme, but compromise with him. Maybe he can, he'd be willing to have one his room and leave it in chaos, his office in chaos, and you have the rest of the house. Uh, think of ways to do things like that. So. But you can't be Mr. Monk. Don't, you can't don't. be Mr. Monk. It <laughs> doesn't happen in a relationship. Yeah, it doesn't. <laughs> yes. Did you, did you mention something about rags? I didn't mention something. Did somebody have a question a lot about of rags? I was talking about rags, but I just I've been sharing a link that says cheap paper towels, but it actually is most it's more about rags than paper towels. Yeah, somebody may have asked said something about rags, so I no, I didn't mention it, Michael. Um, so read Queens where I buy. Now, I I guess I'll go on. I can't. I guess I want to just <clears throat> re-emphasize that. You need to really want this. You 
it's, it's just not going to work unless you want to try to get things straightened out. One of the first questions we get every time straight across the board is, I just don't know where to start. I would organize, keep the house clean, but I, I don't know where to start. Be careful. Sometimes these questions are excuses for not doing it, if you think about it. An excuse is usually a lie we tell ourselves and others to keep from doing something. And when you say, I don't know where to start, I'm going to give you some ideas to help you. But make sure that you're not using that question as an excuse just to plain not to do it. I mean, if nothing else, where are you sitting? Are you sitting on a couch next to a pile of clean clothes that need to be folded? Start folding them while you're listening to me. Are you standing at a kitchen counter that needs to be cleared off? Look there. You can start right there. But there are two pl other places that I usually use to start. One of them I use, and I use both of them off and on. When I help somebody else start organizing their home, when you walk into the door of the room, you start on one side of the door and you work your way around the room and just slowly, meticulously start Organize, getting rid of stuff and I'll go into details about what to do for getting rid of and organizing the stuff that's actually in the room but you start on that one side and work your way around to the back to the door I do that when I go to other people's homes and help them get organized when I do my um, own home what I do for myself is I will sit there because I don't feel good a lot of times and I'll look at that pile on the table or I'll look at the pile on the mantle or the coffee huh? <laughs> or the pile on the, the coffee table and it, I think I've got to get that clean. I've got to get that clean. When am I going to get that clean? You know, and I just don't get up and do it. And so that's a place I would start. The place that's bugging you the most, do you have that exercise bike in the bedroom that's piled with clothes and you wake up every morning, that's the first thing you see. Stop right, do that first thing. Just go do that. Because what happens with that, that's the heaviest thing hanging on your mind and you get that cleared away and it motivates you. I mean, it's, I can't even describe the feeling when that happens. You feel so good about getting that horrible thing you've been dreading done that it makes you want to go on to the next step. And then you keep going and going. And so just do that with the, um, uh, the thing that's bother, bo bugging you the most. Um, the other question we get often is, I don't know how to do it. Besides not, I don't know where to start, they say, I don't know how to do it. Okay. Once again, it's an excuse. I have set, well, let me do it this way. We have a picture of Jack when he's about two years old. He had spilt his little container of Cheerios on the floor. And so he went into the closet, got the broom, got the dustpan out, and he started trying to sweep it up. Now, he was two years old, and he knew how to clean that. I think we say, I don't know how to clean, I don't know how to organize, and I think we know more than we think. Dave, okay, Dave's a 15-year-old teenage yep. boy. I mean, does it get any yeah. worse than that, ladies? But he got his Christmas presents Christmas Eve, and the next thing we knew, I wouldn't recommend doing this Christmas Eve necessarily. Sorry. He came <laughs> hauling armloads out of his bedroom, one after another. He was cleaning out his closet. See, I usually do that on New Year's Eve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Michael does that on New Year's Eve. I was just but, like, I'm done with all this junk. <laughs> yeah, did you hear him? He said, I'm done with all this junk. He was motivated. He'd had enough. He had no place to put his new stuff in. And so he just, he, he was tired of it. And stuff that he'd kept for a long time. Also, trash was everywhere. And trash. And I'm going to mention trash in a minute. Did you hear him say this? Pay, remember this statement. Because it trash was, like was everywhere. Next to my underwear and socks and cologne and everywhere, all in that entire closet. And I was like, man. <laughs> man. <laughs> See, I was it, a messy dude. <laughs> you were a messy dude. See, it dawned on him. And so... He, He's a 15-year-old boy. We've never taught him that much to really organize, yet he knew to get that stuff. He started hauling the stuff out. And dump and, it in the public room. And dump space. it in the, the living room, huh, Michael? So, and even another way, uh, 
you well, know more th- oh go ahead we didn't quite dump it in the living room i was <laughs> oh, like you did does anyone want this or it's going in the trash yeah i'll just sit it right here dave actually hit all the three steps that i'm going to get to in a minute of how to actually deal with this so don't panic i'm going to get there and i how to actually do this but you really do know more so i can sit and watch tv for an hour and learn how to clean I mean, I'll sit there and there'll be a commercial on how to use Pledge to dust your furniture. I'll watch a vacuum cleaner commercial and it shows you how to even plug the vacuum cleaner in, turn it on, and vacuum. How many of you seen Swift, Swiffer, Swiffler, is that what they're called? Swiffer. Swiffer. Um, you know, dusting or to dust mop the floors and that type of thing. You can learn to clean just by watching the commercials on TV. Um, dowel bathroom bubbles on the shower, you know, or the, for the sink. So you really know more than you think, first off. And the other thing is start learning. Don't use these excuses. I don't know where to start. Then go on the internet. Watch our YouTube channel, Living on a Dime. We have details on how to do this. Don't just sit back and say, well, I can't do it because I don't know what to do. Start work. If you have to go to the public, say, I don't have a computer. Well, you must have if you're watching me now. But go to the public library. Get Check out books. Do something to start learning. Just don't give up. We just we live in an era where we just say, well, I don't know how to do it, or I don't have the means, or I can't, so I'm not going to try. Oh. You try until you get it done, until you get it figured out, and you can do it and do that. You can just, also learn by just reading on the bottle of cleaner or whatever how to use it. Well, you, that's true, Dave. I didn't even think about that. Apply the clean- to the surface. <laughs> it's even so fa- true. Like, seriously. Did, really? Yeah. Really? That's true. I never thought you about that. Fail. Like, <laughs> she, Tara says she has not failed as a mother. <laughs> yeah, you don't need books. You just look on the package Actually, and it tells you. Actually, that's a good point because people take and they think they're disinfecting their bathroom by spraying the stuff on there. And they spray it on, wipe it off, and call it good. But if you look, a lot of them say you have to leave it on there 10 minutes. So read, he, he brought up a good point. Read the back of the cleaning products so you'll know how to actually use them. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you, do you have a moment for some questions? Yes, or? go for it. So some people, like Karen was asking, how do you keep up the motivation to do it from start to finish? How do you keep it up? Well, you start Just feeling... Do it. Well, you make an excuse. well the, I know what she's talking... One thing, do <laughs> not do any of this once you get in... If you're cleaning out the garage, if you're cleaning out anything, for more than two hours, and then quit for a while. Because you can suffer burnout really fast if you keep going very long. You think, well, i got to keep going because there's so much to do. But allow yourself, say, no, I'm not going to do it more than that. So that will keep your physical and mental energy up a little bit. The other thing that's a perfect thing when you start losing motivation is I treat myself to something special. Um, I'll tell myself, if I get the kitchen all cleaned up, I'm going to have my chocolate candy bar, you know, if I, whatever, whatever gives you pleasure. If you, the thought of laying in the bathtub, drinking a cup of tea or coffee, do that as your reward. Find something to reward yourself. I know a woman, she said, and it wasn't very much, but this is all it took to motivate her. She said, I would, when I go to the grocery store, I would buy myself a clean sponge to use in my kitchen or a clean dish towel, new, brand new dish towel to use in my kitchen. And she said that was motivation enough for me to clean the kitchen up. So it's just little things. You you need to, it's like any other job, you need to reward yourself with little things like that. You know, me, I would say, I'm going to spend an hour at the library. You could say, don't spend money because we're on, living on a dime is living frugally. Uh, but um, we try to teach. But if you need to go shopping, window shopping, or ex- I'm going to exercise if you love to exercise, find get something. Get a burger. Yes, Michael. Uh, so I had a few questions. Wow. Uh, Lindsay, well, first of all, Lindsay was answering someone else's question. But she said, start with things you aren't attached to, things that are clearly junk and don't start with sentimental. You know what? I'm, that's my next point. I was just going to get on to that. So I'll go into detail okay. and answer her question because that was my next point. I was okay. going to tell you real quick, for those of you who need schedules, I don't usually do a schedule, but to, for you newbies that are just starting out <laughs> learning this stuff, 
We have Nancy newbie. <laughs> we have a ton of schedules of what to do daily, what to do weekly, what to do monthly that you can actually print off. And Michael's going to put the link up for you, and they're in our show notes. Go to livingonadime.com and click show notes, and it'll be in there. And so we've got schedules in there that I think, do we have some in dining? We might have just, we don't have any in dining. Yeah, but I think, aren't they in the, uh, how to get clean and organized? But we have, we have e-course, um, e-books and they're, uh, cleaning on a dime and laundry on a dime. And what's the other, organize on a dime or, or well, they're not called on a dime. No, what are they? Cleaning, our cleaning, our laundry and our organizing books. Uh, yeah. How to get organized uh, ebooks. Click on our um, store and you'll be able to find all those. And we go into a lot, really, a lot of detail in those, even more so. So I wanted to give you the schedules. And then you were talking about just how to start with, where to, which, what things to start with. And that was going to be my next on the list. Most people, what happens is they'll say, but how do I get rid of my, my Uncle Henry's piece of driftwood? That we've been <laughs> passing down for like six generations. I, how do you get rid of these things? Uncle or Henry my, gets featured on the show. He every does. Year. Uncle, Uncle Henry's always on the show. Or Wait, Grandma's this, pair of bed socks that she wore every on her last days, or something like that. <laughs> these are th- Michael's life. These are things that people are emotionally attached to, and that's the first thing they ask me. How do I get rid of those things? You're going at it backwards. Because what you're doing is you're asking that question because you know that's hard to give up those things. And so you think in your mind, well, I just can't get rid of grandma's nightgown or whatever it is. Because that's your excuse for not doing any organizing. You see what I mean? You're using that as an excuse. It's an emotional thing. I can't do it, so I'm not going to even try it. Don't do that. Don't start there. The first thing that I have that you should get rid of is if you just get rid of the trash. You go in, the least emotional thing, the attachment that you have to, you go in and you just get rid of the trash. What did Dave say? He said half the stuff in his room was trash. Oh, yeah. You know, by the time you clean up the trash, and even by trash, you can extend that a little bit farther to, if you're doing a closet, get rid of any clothes, like your shoes that are totally worn out with holes in them and you don't wear them anymore, clothes that have horrible stains that you can't use anymore, that the elastic is missing in the pants or they're ripped to shreds, get rid of all any of the trash and you're going to have 50% of the work done. You really will. The next thing after you get rid of the trash, because see, trash is least emotional. The next thing will be things like collections or just things you have a lot of, mugs. I saw on a YouTube station, the other channel the other day, I didn't even get to count all of them because the screenshot didn't show all of them, but I saw on a shelf, her kitchen was very tiny, very cluttered, extremely. She had 40 mugs just that I could count on one little shelf 40 mugs are not quite as much of an emotional attachment as say the heirloom things so start with the mugs and there's a verse in the bible that says a man i can't quote it properly but basically a man doesn't buy a plot of land it's in luke without to build a home on without figuring out what he's going to do putting pen to paper how much is it going to cost me to build this building on the land? How much can I get the lumber for the building? Is it going to stand sturdy when I build it? That type of thing. And that verse says only a fool will just buy a plot of land to, land to build something without knowing what's involved. And when you get ready to organize, look at those mugs and think, okay, we have four people in our family. How many mugs do we really need? You know, if you have one in the dishwasher... If you're using one and maybe get a spare one a oh, cup, and a couple yeah. for company, you know, that type of thing, sit down and write down, how many mugs do I really need? And you'd be shocked. You could get rid of three-fourths of your mugs. Probably. Yes, Michael? So David Cooper from Wichita. David Cooper from said, Wichita, son of mine. <laughs> um, he said something that I was also thinking is a lot of items, like 
Uncle, what's his name? Uncle Driftwood. Henry's Driftwood, uh-huh. If you could take a picture of it, especially with Uncle Henry, and then chuck it, the picture's the memory. Yes, yes, that's a good point. <laughs> now, now with the internet and and digital pictures and stuff, take a picture of a lot of things. You have a million pictures on their computer, and they don't take up any space. Yeah, and you can use the, put, put the picture up, and then you don't feel quite so bad getting rid of uh, Uncle Henry's piece of Driftwood and that type of thing. But, you know, you don't le need five sets of dishes. Start getting, go through your clothes. How many black t-shirts do you need? Do you have like um, 30 oh black t-shirts? This is where I go bad. This is where oh, you no. go bad? Oh, I'm well, sorry. Well, yeah, I have like 40 different shirts. 40 there. different like, shirts. <laughs> well, I have like But I mean, seriously, do you need 10 pairs of black pants or black jeans? They're all black jeans. Be brave, be, be ruthless, and if you're really serious about this, you need to just start getting rid of things. And when I talk about, and then after you get all of that done, a couple of things are going to happen. First of all, you can do the pictures like my son suggested and Mike suggested, but you know, you'd be surprised at how much freeing space you have, and you can keep way more than of those heirlooms that you really didn't want it because those you have the emotional attachment to and you don't have to feel so bad. It's like I said, you want to keep the heirlooms because it's like if I say, oh, you got to get rid of all grandma's stuff, I'm a big heavy and I'm an awful person and she's telling me to do that. I'm no way I'm going to get rid of grandma's stuff. So that means I don't have to get organized. But you can even go through the heirlooms. For example, I had a a coat thing that I'd inherited. It was shedding. It was, the, it was, you know, the fur was, fake fur was falling off. I can get rid of that. You know, even though it's like 70 years old, it's not going to last another five years. I had scrapbooks of mine from when I was in fifth and sixth grade. And all the scrapbook had was like tickets to my school play. I, well, I think it was. I couldn't remember what one thing was in there. I had some smashed dried flowers. I didn't even know what they were for. I mean, I couldn't remember one. There was not one item in that scrapbook that I knew what it was from or what it was for. I took the whole thing and put it in the trash. I'm 67 years old. The thing didn't mean anything to me. What's it going to mean to my kids? Nothing. So start with the heirloom. Start with things like that. My mom had given me all the cards from my baby shower when I was born. And there must have been 40 of these uh, baby shower cards of people that had given gifts to me. I didn't know any of these people. So of the 40, I kept like four of them, my two grandmas and two aunts. And I got rid of all the rest of them because they had no meaning. And, yes, Michael? Reva says, and I think she's talking about with grandma's thing. Oh, she says, ask yourself, would grandma keep this? Yes, very good. She asked, she said, would grandma keep this? And I've, I've used this before. I said, would your grandma or your mom want you to be suffering and sitting in this clutter just to keep her stuff and being miserable and having your family unhappy because her stuff has taken up so much space? Grandma went, as a matter of fact, most grandmas really got rid of a lot of stuff themselves, you know, so don't. Uh, they don't want you to live like that. They want their heirlooms to give you pleasure. If it's not, you need to go ahead and do something with it. I kept dolls. I kept dolls from when I was like five years old. They're, these things are over 60 years old. The rubber is disintegrated. It was disintegrating in them. Why did I keep them? My kids didn't even know what they were. And so I tossed them. Now I had like a couple of ceramic ones that were in nicer condition. I would keep those, but the rest of them I had to just toss. Use common sense on this stuff. Go through it. Um, and I don't mean, and some things that maybe, like I had, like the dishes, you don't, I don't mean to toss them, but ask family members if they would like it. Something like that. Even extend it further because it may, some cousins, you may have a great grandma that you share and maybe they would like to have some of great grandma's stuff. So don't hoard and be in a way selfish that you want to keep all this stuff to yourself even though it's not giving you any pleasure at the moment, you know. Memories memories aren't things. Memories are people. Yep. And that's the most important thing. Preaching and on. you're not creating good memories for your own family. They're not going to have good memories of their life with you if it's total chaos and misery. So, oh, Michael's sitting back there. 
preach it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, actually, it's funny because I. So here he comes. Just here second, he comes. Just for a second. <laughs> so every year I get this crazy binge to clean on New Year's Eve, and one year I was like, I have these high school yearbooks, and I didn't really like high school that much, and so. I was thinking, why am I keeping them? They take a huge box. Mm -hmm. And I used yeah. to write for the yearbook. So I took them to the library and I scanned the pages with the articles I wrote. Mm -hmm. And I scanned the pages of the notes that my friends wrote personally to me three years ago. And I have not looked at them since then. Mm -hmm. But the books are gone and it's one less box of stuff yeah. to have to keep on my brain. Yeah. I just would tear out a page. You know, the yearbooks didn't have, I didn't have, my picture wasn't in a whole lot a whole lot in the yearbook I just store out the two pages that my you know picture happened to be my kids aren't in, really that interested in my Amen. oh yeah that's another thing is your kids don't care so if you yeah. don't care you shouldn't keep it yeah so what are, what are you keeping those types of things for you know Tara's back there yelling amen so <laughs> now do we have any more quick questions Michael uh let me look we had some earlier let's see we oh before we start the whole point to this section, start with the least emotional things getting rid of and work your way down. And that way you can, um, you know, you can, get, you can get to the heirlooms and easier. Go ahead, Michael. Heather says, I always think when I give things away that if I need it in the future, God will provide it for me. It yes. gives me freedom to let it go. Yes. That is so good. And another thing that helped me too is I had this stuff and I had a bunch of di dishes and there was a... Uh, a young girls home and they were making apartments for these young girls that like come from abuse situations and they needed household goods you know I could hoard those dishes or I could give them to those girls that could use them you know if I can release that stuff and give it to others I think let somebody else that really needs it and could actually use it have it I, I wonder if God I don't know I wonder if God blesses us when we hoard things like that, you know, he just, he wants us to give and share. And, and I, like Michael says, we give things away. He's going to give us way more. He may not give us more dishes, but he's going to give us something emotionally and spiritually that we need even worse than the dishes. Well, and if it's a burden for you and you're carrying oh, yeah. it around. And at, when there was a time where I was getting rid of a bunch of things and I sold some of them and I figured I'm going to get rid of all this stuff and I'm going to sell some. And I'll make enough money from that that if in the future I regret getting rid of one thing, I'll be able to buy it back. Mm -hmm. And yeah. after 20 years, I've never missed any of it uh -uh. or bought any of it back. You, it is so w rare for me to hear somebody say they got rid of stuff and they really totally regret it. Once in a great while, I probably somebody does, but it's so rare. So, any more questions? Uh, a lot of it we've already hit, but... Lynn says, my 19-year-old daughter who has a hard time getting rid of things actually said the other day she didn't want things for Christmas. You know, Ellie was saying that too. She said, let's get less presents next year or stuff. I think, I think kids in that age group are starting to get overwhelmed. They have, you know, they've just gotten so much that we've just given them everything with both parents working all the time just so they can have all the stuff they want. And they're, they're getting overwhelmed. That's why there's a trend towards minimalism. Minimalism. minimalism yeah there you Actually, say, yeah that's what i was and so there's to a trend through. towards that because we've hit the point where the kids are getting too much and it's emotionally hard on them go ahead michael don met said picture how you want a room to look yes i forgot i had that on my notes if you're if you have a dining room table and it's piled high you look at that dining room table and you think how would you love, in the greatest scheme of things, how would you love that dining room table to look? Do you want it sitting there with a beautiful vase of flowers, uh, a, a bowl of fruit, and, and placemats around it? And look at that dining room table and visual, visualize it. Get up, clear off that table, and fix it the way you want. On the mantle, the same way. Do you want just maybe two or three items sitting on the mantle? What items do you want on the mantle above the fireplace? Visualize that get up clear it off and do it and that when you do that you get so excited that i i can't explain the excitement it's kind of like being a grandma for the first time you know you until somebody's been a grandparent you can't ex uh, explain the excitement and the same thing happens when you start organizing and cleaning like this yes michael he's laughing back there oh i'm just looking at other comments but uh let me look back and see what else there was um 
Amy T says, pro tip, stream how-to or cleaning videos on your TV so they're loud enough for you to hear and listen while you move around the house. And yes. she said that's motivating to her. Yes. Well, that's another thing. Every, almost every year, I read when Queens were I ride by. Even though I've read it a million times, at the beginning in January, I read it again because it's a very motivating story. Uh, go check out cleaning and organizing books from the library. Go to YouTube channels like Living on a Dime and watch a few of those. And some um, the, to the question when how do you get how do you keep going and not burn out you know and when you start uh, aren't motivated anymore, try another YouTube um, video and watch it and uh, read the books those types of things, you know and something times too people like putting on music. It helps them get stirred up, and certain types of music gets them excited, and that type of thing. Uh, there was, I think, one other one. Oh, actually, we usually say this, but I didn't hear you say it. You may I have, but Lindsay was saying, just maybe focus on one pile and start small, and don't think of doing the whole. Yes, room. that's what I was saying. When the thing that bugs you the most, start with that, whatever that is, the coffee table, the dining room table. Um, Another thing, too, is I didn't mention, I mentioned this a lot in the, I think I mentioned it in dining. Yeah, I think it's in dining and maybe on the website, Living on a Dime, too. Um, the five, my five-minute commercial, what I do when I was sick, and you can do this even trying to get motivated to clean, I would be watching something on TV, and when the commercial come on, I would get up and try to do five minutes worth of stuff, and then I'd make myself come sit back down. And then the next commercial, I do another little section for five minutes or clean up the dishes or whatever. That has helped me more than anything because once I got started, I couldn't hardly stop. I had to force myself to sit down and stop. It was so hard. But you might try the five-minute thing and keep doing just a little tiny bit, and you'll find the more that gets cleared off, the better it looks, and it's just like it's like a reward in and of itself. You just want to keep going so you can get even more reward. Oh, Kim said, and, and I think this has really struck me and my family, which has motivated me, but Kim says, hi from San Diego. My mom has been keeping things since she was a child. When God calls her home, I know my sister and I are going to be overwhelmed to go through what, mm -hmm. what to keep. Yeah. Well, now one thing on that, when some, she said that uh, when her mom has kept everything since she was a child and that it's going to be overwhelming, you know, when her mom's gone... What you do in a case like that, I suggest anything that doesn't have real memories for you, really uh, important memories and um, that touch your heart, then you need to just, it'll be a job to get rid of it, but you pick out those special things you want, and then uh, it'll be easier to get rid of the other stuff. Uh, and you can, it wouldn't, you wouldn't get as much money, but you can do like a st estate sales where you take the most important things you want, take them out of the house and let somebody else come in, you know, if you can afford to do it that way. And they will sell everything for you, take a percentage of it, and uh, it's not as much work for you if you're worried about the work. You know, I didn't know if you were worried about the work or the, just the emotional of picking out things type stuff. Yep. Is that? Yep. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, actually... Amy G also says, "In the day, in this day and age of plenty, we don't need to keep so much of the thing uh, of the things from the past. You used to get given dinner sets, as they were so expensive, but now everyone has more than they need." That's that's true, Amy. Um, I was just talking to Ellie the other day, telling her how moms, when they would pass away, they they would say that their daughter gets this this kettle or this pan. Or, or something like that because those items were so expensive that they would pass them on down and it's like Amy says we don't need that stuff I don't need five sets of dishes from my grandma great grandma my mom now even for something like that I might take one place setting or two place settings out of that set and maybe sharing it with my other family members type of thing but that's true it used to be People would inherit things more so because they act, actually needed the stuff to use type of thing. Yep. Lori, my mother-in-law is addicted to QVC and her closets are full. Oh, addicted to QVC. Her closets are full. Yeah. And, you know, that's... I know a woman that she had, I think it was like 57 pairs of pants. And... 
Wasn't me. Tara says it wasn't me. <laughs> but that, okay, I don't, I'm going to get into some here. We, it's time for us to close, but I'll do this really quick. A while back, I found out something. Shopping like that and spending all your money on things like that, I realize there are people out there who need help really bad financially. Maybe not here in America, maybe other places. Well, and who uh, need help surviving. Period. Yeah, just different things, different charities and things. I'm thinking, does God want me buying more pants? Or would he, is he blessing me with more money so that I can help others? I think as a Christian, a lot of us are wrong in just taking and hoarding more and more stuff for ourselves. When God gives us this this blessing, you know, of extra money or whatever, that we should be using that to give, you know, to help for others type of thing. And if you kind of look at some of that, even giving your stuff away, you know, I'm, I need to give these coats to somebody that can actually use these coats instead of hanging in my closet. Go ahead, Michael. No, no. Oh, I, I, I thought you had. I disagree with you. Is, do we have to close now? Um, they were hollering at me. I have to close on time. Oh, I don't mind. Uh, I'm just looking to see. If Is there all are the other questions? questions. Or, do you have any more questions? Uh, I did not see any. Just not. chatter to each other. I and see a lot, but they're mostly repeats about things that uh, have an emotional. You have an emotional bond to. Yeah. Or, see that that. The the emotional bond to stuff is the biggest thing that keeps people from getting organized. That's why I say don't start with that. Start with those piles of paper and, and those piles of different things. Yes, Michael? Oh, no, no. You, oh. Can you know, the piles of papers, the trash. You would be shocked at the trash you have. You really would. You may, And guys may have like 10 pliers, pairs of pliers in the garage. You don't need 10 pairs of pliers. Get rid of the paint cans that are full of dried up paint. That type of stuff, you get rid of all that stuff, you would be so shocked how much more room you would have. Uh, Dave, a couple people are asking, they're trying to remember what your shirt says and telling other people. Oh. This oh, is for his your, Uncle Dave. And also your cup. It says, uh, I can freeze time. What's your superpower? And it has a picture of a camera on it. He and can... then the cup also says, uh, well, it's I don't a know picture about of a camera. A picture of a camera. It says I shoot people and sometimes cut off their heads, as in taking, you know, photos. Pictures and, of yeah. people. <laughs> yep. <laughs> uh, Tracy says my mom had two garbage bags of socks when she passed, and ten pairs still had tags on them. Uh, yes, she had didn't two her or two bags of socks, and some that still had tags on. And when that happens, usually there's there's a um, there's a diff a deeper problem going on when people have that many of certain things. It's like a shopping is an addiction, just like other things, and and that's what happens sometimes when you get people with a whole bunch. Or like in my mom's case, she remembers the depression, so she tends to hoard, you know, and use everything up totally, and has a lot. Go ahead, Michael. So believe in yourself, said. Uh, or believe in yourself, treat your body well, says, just t tuned in. I work around 48 to 60 hours a week. My house gets so cluttered and just a mess. Uh, more hours I work. How did you do this when you were a working mom? Okay. The, I don't know if you have kids or not. Uh, well, you said um, you have to really, working that many hours, It's you have to stay on top of it. You cannot let it go. And I trained the kids. They had to make their beds every morning before they went to school. Well, they get up and before they even uh, had breakfast. And this motivates kids more than anything else. Is they had to clean their bedroom and get their uh, pick their bedroom up, make their beds, and um, uh, get dressed before breakfast. And they moved very quickly. And we would have a set time of all of us getting in there like when I stay with the grandkids let's get up and get everybody work together it's it has to be a team effort is what I'm no. saying but I kept on top of it in the morning Jeez. before I went to work I threw in a load of wash by the time I was dressed ready to go to work I grabbed that same load and I'd go outside hang it on and on the line and leave and go to work I'd come home take the load off the the line and I'd come in and usually I had dinner partially started and everybody got up. We cleared. I cleaned up the kitchen every time I got up. No matter how tired I was, I cleaned up the kitchen after we ate a meal. And you just have to 
force yourself. If you were at work still, if you had to work an extra hour overtime, you would get the work done even if you're tired. And you have to just keep forcing yourself to do that. And what happens is if you keep on top of things, some people see this huge mess. I don't even know where to start now. But once you get it organized, that's why organizing is so important because you can keep it clean easier. If you don't have 20 mugs to keep washing, only five mugs to wash, I'd much rather wash five mugs than 20 mugs. You know, there's less stuff to take care of. So when you get organized, you have less things to clean and take care of. You have less knickknacks to dust on your, um, you know, mantles and things. And so it, it really is much easier than you think once you get on t get it cleaned up on top of it and organized. You can do, I could do cleaning within two hours on a Saturday without even batting an eye. My laundry was already done because I did it every single day. And so I just had to clean for a couple hours. We changed the sheets real quick. Somebody would vacuum up and we were done. So. Ooh, here's some. Amy T says, take take photos as you go. Sometimes it's easy to forget how much progress you've made if a job is Ooh. taking a long while. Oh, good idea, Amy. She said to take pictures as you go so you can see how far you've come, which is a really good idea. Yeah. Um... Angela was asking, should you have yard sales or just donate? And there were a lot of people weighing in, but what would you say? Just get rid of it. Well, I used to give garage sales, but I found out a couple of things. It was a lot of work to do a garage sale. And I didn't always make that much money unless I had a whole bunch of huge big pieces of furniture. I didn't uh, do make that much money to make worth sitting two days out, you know, dealing with it. So... Um, I personally now, I just donate it. I'm thinking I'm helping somebody else, and that's my part of my way of just giving and helping others a little bit, so I just donate it. We, we just feel like we have to make money off of everything, and I think, I think in one way God blesses us when we give to others. He gives it back to us. You know, I think he gives it back to us twice as much if we just donate, and so when I could think of it that way, it was easier for me just to release the stuff. To get and think I'm giving it to somebody that really needs it and I don't have to do the work you know so I would say personally donate it I have given garage sales because I was so desperate for money but I wasn't working at the time and I needed the money so I had more time to sit and do the garage sale maybe and I'd get a little bit but most of the time I don't know that it's worth it well in my thinking that stuff is probably a burden to you Mm -hmm. And most of the time at the garage sale, you'll sell 10% of it, and then it's still a burden to you. Yeah, yeah. And it would be better to just let it go away. Yeah. Uh, Kayla was wondering if, I think she's asking if you are my mom or Tara's mom. I am Tara's mom. <laughs> so, uh, there was, uh, Ellen said half the time I don't even notice the clutter, which is a problem. Yeah, yeah, that's... I think if you live in the same place for a long time, and it's hard to You know to what? Take all. pictures. Go around your house and take a few pictures and sit and look at them on your computer. And then that might help <clears throat> stimulate some visual, you know, where you'd actually notice it. But you've got to... For something like that, what I would do is I would step into the room and just kind of look around the room and say, what's out of place? If you have most things in place and everything's nice and clean... When something's out of place, you notice it right away. And that's why I say once you get everything clean and organized, it's easier to take care of because you just automatically go over there, pick it up, and put it away. Um. Oh, before you say, excuse me, Mike, I was going to give you an example. Not that Tara's, Tara's not a bad housekeeper at all. But if you don't think this makes a difference in your family, Ta Jack is like a lot of young boys, you know, he doesn't like making bed necessarily and everything, but he got a new comforter. And he called me and he said, Nan, I'm making my bed every morning now with my new Whoa. comforter and it looks so nice. And things like that, kids like visually seeing things neat. It really made him feel happy to have that nice, neat looking bed with his new comforter on. I don't think... I don't think we realize what a difference it makes to kids. They like a sense of order and a sense of neatness. When things are, things in their little lives can be chaotic. And when things are, they like, they like same. They like things to be the same. And 
that they, they're comforted by that. So I don't think we realize what damage we're doing to our kids by just letting everything be a mess all the time mentally. It just, it's hard, jarring to them. But go ahead, Michael. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I just, uh, we, we don't have to stay on for longer if you want. Yeah, we need to get right. I, I was just going to mention Stephanie, because I think this is maybe a problem a lot of our viewers deal with. Stephanie said when I was first married, cleaning was a huge issue. We had a cleaning lady growing up, so I never truly learned how to do it. Yeah, Stephanie said she didn't have a, uh, she had a cleaning lady growing up, and she never learned how to do it. And, you know, that is a lot. I, I remember a gal that became a missionary's wife, and she said the f hardest mm. thing for her going on the mission field was she'd never been taught how to clean. Moms, you've got to teach your kids how to clean. People holler about making their kids have chores and say, well, you don't shouldn't have your kids do chores. It helps them to have life skills. Cleaning is a life skill. I'm sorry. It really is. You have to it learn. It could be a life-saving life skill. Yeah, yeah. It could be a life-saving. We have a lot of people that are worried about germs and different things, or they're healthy. They want to eat healthy, and they want to do this, this, that, and the other, but their house is nasty, dirty. And you can make your family sick, especially in the bathroom and kitchen area, if you don't keep these things clean. It's important. So, you know, if you haven't been taught, you can, you know, you can learn. You need to, like I said before, go on the internet, go on Living on a Dime. We got, we show you how to do things, um, well, get books. And for people that haven't learned that, uh, and how that's to, not a bad thing. Don't feel embarrassed about that either. Well, no, I was going to say, though, that How to Get Organized eCourse has totally step-by-step -step things. Oh, yeah, the How to Get Organized eCourse. We have one of those that we go step-by-step -step on all of this stuff to do different things. Um, and I did a really radical thing. I just needed the job. But I, I worked as a house uh, cleaning uh, with a cleaning service for... I think about five or six months, I learned so much doing that. You know, learn things like that. You can take jobs if you're in a position, you know, a young gal or some. If you're young and you're not married or whatever and you're just starting out, take jobs as a cleaner at a bakery, different things like that, and you can learn all these skills really easily. Well, there could be more, but I know we probably yeah, want to wrap okay. it up. I would say, uh, I would just remind everyone that we hit 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, so thank you all for doing yes, that. Yes, thank you. We were so excited. Tar and I were sitting there watching it turn over, so thank you, guys. At It'll Monday's be... show, we will be uh, having a... Well, well, we'll tell you guys what to do for a drawing for mm -hmm. some free cookbooks, and um, an probably apron. Monday we'll have you... And an apron. Yeah, and an apron. And then we'll probably actually do the drawing on Wednesday, but Monday we'll tell you what to do. Monday you'll get the details on how to... Uh, you know, sign up for it, and then Wednesday they'll probably do the drawing. Yep. So we're really glad all of you are here. So and I guess we'll wrap it up, and I'm going to be going home, guys. So wait, when? Well, before the next next live stream, I'll be gone. Whoa. So, so Dave and I are going to have to talk. So Dave and Mike will be on next Monday. So <laughs> join us Monday at Living on a Dime, and no, don't forget. I hope you guys are enjoying the new cookbook and those that haven't it's called Dining on a Dime and eat join us what Tara? Eat better spend less. Eat better spend less. I didn't have the line down That's properly. Tara not participating That's in the show. That's Tara not <laughs> participating. So well guys I hope you all had a Merry Christmas and have a happy new year and we'll see you on Monday and I hope I can see you in a couple. Of, oh, my God! A couple of new people were just asking what time uh, Monday. Monday is four thirty Mountain Time. Yep. So right. Wait, Monday is New Year's Eve. Though. Yep, that's okay. Are we what? gonna we're gonna do New Year's Eve? Are we gonna stream we're gonna do till midnight? Uh, well, <laughs> we'll be on for at least the regular show. Yeah, we'll be on for the regular show crazy. on Monday. 4.30 Monday Mountain Time. So right. we yep. will see you all there. And Happy New Year, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Thanks Bye. for joining us. My hair. Then Mike's going to have to go click end. You have to go click end? Bye, <laughs> Oh, how horrible. How horrible, huh? Thank you, co-helper. You done.